Greetings, everyone. It is Wednesday, February 20th, 2019, 7.04 a.m. I just thought I would shoot a video of my inks and my ink storage because someone on the Goulet Nation Facebook page was asking about ink storage. Um, just, you know, what do you do with all your inks? Um, and it's a legitimate question. I didn't even have any ink storage until... Um, any legitimate ink storage until about three weeks ago. Um, before that, these Tupperware boxes here, I had three of those filled with ink. Um, but of course, ink bottles, you know, you can't get but so many of them in a Tupperware bin. And I have 89 ink bottles, folks. I did not even know how many I had until I started putting them on this shelf. Um, yeah, 89. 11 more and I become a cliched road trip earworm song that, par that parents, you know, want to gouge their eardrums out over when they're on a long road trip with their kids. Um, but, yeah, I didn't realize I had that many inks. But the problem was I had three of those Tupperware bins, but I still had ink bottles covering about a third of my kitchen table. And I was like, you know, something's got to give. This is ridiculous. I can't even sit at my kitchen table to write a letter. I can't... You know, it's such a pain in the butt to try to clear off the table to have dinner. So I went to Bed Bath & Beyond and got what I call the poor man's Ikea shelf. Um, very poor man's Ikea shelf. It was the first time I had put anything together like this. And, um, you know, other than putting the top on backwards where the raw edge was facing front instead of back, I did pretty good, um, I have to admit. Um, it's a little scotch rickety, but, you know... It hasn't collapsed yet, and it's holding all my ink, so that's what it was intended for. So, so far, so good. Um, I thought I'd give you a little uh, tour of my inks and what's up there on the top of the shelf. Um, this cabinet here on the left and the top is my Asian inks. Um, to the right is my British inks, which basically means diamine, because that's the brand that I've tended to collect more than anything else. Um... To the bottom left is a German, French, a Dutch ink, and then to the bottom right is my American ink stash. Um, but first I'll show you what's up top here. Okay, first of all I have my ink samples. Um, these you can buy from Anderson pens, Goulet pens. Um, let me see, where do, how far out do I have to be to get this? To, there we go. Um, and you basically, it's $1.25 for a couple of milliliters in a vial like this. And I highly recommend this because it saves you so much money in the long run if you buy an ink sample and you don't like the ink, as opposed to buying a full-on bottle and then you're stuck with a 50 or 60 milliliter bottle that costs you anywhere from $15 to $30 and you hate the ink. And then you're hating on yourself for why did I spend money on an ink I don't like. Um, fortunately, with all the inks I've bought over the years, I've only had two that I did, ended up not liking. I bought Pelican Edelstein Ruby, and it was way too pink. And I just forgot that rubies are the gemstones that are based in the pink spectrum of red, and that what I prefer is garnet, which is the brown side of red. So that was my fault. I just wasn't thinking it through. And then I also bought a bottle. It was absolutely gorgeous ink. It was a brand called Nemosine. And it was called Snowball, and it was this beautiful ice blue with silver shimmer in it. But the problem was it had so much shimmer in it, it clogged every stinking pen I ever put it in. So, yeah, that was a bust, too. But I guess with 89 bottles of ink, I should be considering myself lucky that I only um, have ever had ink regret twice. But ink samples are a nice way to... Uh, Make sure that you don't have any ink regret. There's one I need to try, the Pelican Edelstein uh, Mandarin. Um, a lot of these I haven't tried yet, and I like to keep the empty vials and just rinse them out so that if I want to send an ink sample to a friend, I can. So moving over here, here's my wax seals. Um, a lot of those come from the online store nostalgicimpressions.com. Uh, some of them don't, but most of them do. Um, I used to use stick wax and a candle lighter, and after 
nearly setting a couple of envelopes on fire. I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way to do it. And a friend of mine uh, recommended these wax pellets. And all you do is you put them in a wax spoon and you just melt them and then pour it on. And that works so much better. Um, you get the wax pellets at Nostalgic Impressions too, and they have like 20 different colors of wax. So, um, yeah, much safer way to do it, melting it in a spoon, than trying to not set an envelope on fire and burn your apartment down because you're trying to be snooty and use a wax seal. Uh, this box here is a box that my niece made me about six or seven years ago. Um, it was some leftover wood my dad had, and she had one of those, um, like, Play-Doh pens where you could, like, draw with Play-Doh and things like that. And she made this um, for me and wanted me to use it for pens, so I have. Um, you can see that I have a bunch of just random stuff in here. Um, ink cartridge boxes, eyedroppers for my eyedropper fill pens, a random traveling inkwell that I used to have at work, um, my old music set code, which I'll explain to you in a little bit. Um, the one and only dip pen I own with the blue, what is that called? I can't remember what the name of that nib is. The blue, I want to say blue moon, but I know that's wrong. And uh, so a lot of random, and don't ask me why I have a miniature screwdriver in there. I think that's just where it ended up. And these washcloths I use, as you can see, when I'm cleaning and inking my pens. These have been washed several times, but used so much that they've kind of turned into works of art themselves. This was the last one that I actually used, and that purple is a gorgeous purple. I'll show you here in a few minutes. So moving on, I've got random sets of washi tape for letter writing. Uh, the flute player figurine was one my mother gave me years ago, and... Um, she was on my desk at work until I got laid off, so I just sat her there. Um, the Engine 37 Retro 51 was a gift to my husband for Christmas, because it's the firefighter, first responder, um, Retro 51. And since firefighting has played an important part in his life, I figured that was a no-brainer for a Christmas present, and he loved it, and he keeps it in the tube when he's not using it. Uh, Gorilla Glue helped me put this whole schlemiel together. It's probably the only thing that's holding it together. Uh, Writer's Digest calendar and a gorgeous picture of my niece from a few years ago in one of her tap dancing costumes. Um, and then I have a random black wing pencil and this rotary cutter I use to cut cross stitch fabric. So yeah, it's kind of a random mishmash here. So now I'll show you the Asian inks. Um, most of the Asian inks I have are the Japanese brand Aro Shizuku. Um, they come in these amazing bottles, um, real sturdy, so you're not going to knock it over when you're filling your pen. And then if you see that V-shaped divot down there, you put your pen all the way into the nib there, and it gives you a much easier fill. Uh, this color is Kujaku. That's peacock blue. It's a very gorgeous teal, one of my favorite shades. Asagao, I can't remember what that translates from in Japanese, but it's basically like a cornflower or periwinkle type purpley blue. Um, Shinryoko, it's called uh, forest green. It really reminds me of like pine needles, and that's one of my favorite greens. Um, Yuyaki is sunset orange, and this is a much more subdued orange than some I have, but it's a little easier on the eyes when you write with it. Yamabuto, I can't remember what that translates from in the Japanese, but it is a beautiful like magenta-ish pink. And this was the very first bottle of a Roshizuku I ever bought, called Murasaki Shikibu, and it's a very, very pure, rich purple. Not you know, not overly heavy on the blue or the red side. Um, this is the one, if I remember correctly, um, a Roshizuku ink that is named after a person. Murasaki Shikibu was a noblewoman in medieval Japan who, um, she was one of the first really renowned female writers. 
Um, I have a little uh, Yamabuto Anasa gal, and you're probably wondering why do you need the little one if you have the big bottle. Well, when I had a steady full-time job, I would take ink with me to work in case I needed to ink up a pen on my lunch break, so I would take those little ones with me. Um, Sutsuji I bought kind of as an ink sample. This one is Azalea Pink. Um, I haven't decided if I want to commit to a full bottle yet, and I still have enough in there. I can get in one more pen fill and make up my mind. Um, this is Sailor Shikiori. Um, and the color is, if I can get it to focus, I don't know if that's going to focus, but Shimoyo, which is a kind of slate gray, kind of a bluey, like one of those colonial blues, slate gray. Then I have Sailor Gentle. This one is called Nioi Sumeri, which is a purplish blue. I think you're seeing that I like the purplish blues already. This one is from a brand called Bungo Box, and this is Piano Mahogany Brown, and this is one of my favorite inks. Um, it's, Bungo Box inks are a little more on the pricey side, but they're so super saturated and so beautiful. Um, and here's another Bungo Box ink. This one's called Hatsukoi, and Hatsukoi is the Japanese word for sapphire, and this really is like a bright in-your-face blue. It's a true blue, but it's really bright, so... I actually keep my Sailor 1911 Purple Cosmo synced with that. Don't ask me why, but that's the go-to ink for that pen. I think it's because it's got a music nib and it really lays down an amazing line of ink with that ink. And then this is Bungo Box Soleil, and this one is very similar to another ink I have that I'll show you in a minute. Um, one of the German inks I have. This one is, it's interesting because it starts out orangey, and dries to a yellow. And then I have another one that starts out yellow and dries to like a saffron orange that I'll show you in a moment. I have a bottle of Sailor Gentle Apricot. And I think they're actually redoing the bottles so that these bottles are going the way of the dodo and they're going to start putting the Gentle Inks in these bottles, if I remember correctly. Um, then I have, this is my all-time favorite bluish, well, not my all-time favorite, but one of my favorite bluish purples, as you can see from the spill on the label. This is Kobe number no. 42, Maya Lapis Purple. And yes, this was about a $40 bottle of ink. Needless to say, I rationed that out. Then, these two similar bottles here, this is a cool ink brand, and I really want to get some more ink from this brand. This is actually not Japanese. This is, well, the name is Japanese, but this is a South Korean brand called Colorverse. And this is um, the Hayabusa set. Now, most all, not all of them, but most of the Colorverse sets that have come out so far are space-themed. And usually the big bottle is one color, and, or science themed actually too. The big bottle is one color and the little bottle is another. Um, I'm thinking of the Schrodinger's cat set. There's Schrodinger is like, there's one that's a green and then I can't remember what the other little bottle is. Um, but the, this set, the Hayabusa, it's the same color but the little bottle is a shimmer ink. Um, and they've done that with a couple of the inks that they've released, but for the most part, the inks are complementary colors. Um, they have one set that's based on, like, the animals that went into space before humans. Um, they have one that's science and physics based that's, like, about gluons and protons and Higgs boson and all that. Um, they do have some that aren't space-themed, but for the most part they are, and those are really... This is a really rich, pure purple, kind of along the lines of the Murasaki Shikibu, but more saturated with pigment. So that's my Asian shelf right there. This is my British shelf, or basically my diamine shelf, but it is a British ink brand. Um, remember I showed you that piece of paper that said music said. That corresponds to this row of inks here, with these two here. Um, it was a set of... 10 inks that were inspired by composers. Um, and it used to be that you could only, you had to have that reorder number to buy the inks after you use these little bottles. But now I believe they just sell them in the, these size bottles just as a matter of uh, course. So 
that being a musician, I had to have that one. And I do have my favorites in there. The Tchaikovsky is a really pretty blue. Um, my least favorite is the Wagner, but you would expect that Wagner would have a fugly color because his music was kind of fugly anyway. Um, only fuglier composer in, in modern history was Stravinsky, I think, but that's a discussion for a different video. These are all just regular diamine colors. Um, I really like the Oxblood and the, um, oh, what's the other one? The Red Dragon and the Oxblood. Oxblood does look like blood. If you're cleaning up the, if you're cleaning out a pen that you've had it in, you're going to look like you're at a crime scene. Um, all the ones with the silver and gold tops are shimmer inks. Um, then I got these little bottles to carry with me. Um, basically I got these little bottles because I couldn't find the colors in the bigger bottles. Like Sherwood Green for some reason. Well, that's the crimson one. It's Sherwood Green. It, you can't find it in a bottle any bigger than that. I guess it's a popular color. And the one that I really hope to get a full-size bottle of someday is the Earl Grey. But it was so popular, it sold out right as it came out, so I was lucky to get this little one. Um, then I've got some other regular diamine bottles. Um, and then these were from the 1950, uh, 1950, 150th anniversary collection. I've got Regency Blue, which is a really pretty, like, navy blue. Um, and then the Lilac Night, which is kind of a purpley blue. And there was a set of them that if you sat these bottles in it, you could sit them in a circle. I can't remember how many were in the set, but I really only wanted the Lilac Night and the Regency Blue. Okay, so that's my British, aka Diamine shelf. Um, and I really originally started collecting Diamine because they're super easy to clean up. And when I started using bottle things, that's pretty much what I was going for. But they're also very, very pretty, pretty pigmented inks without being so saturated that you can't use them because they clog your pens. So Diamine's a really affordable, cleanable, just really nice brand if you're getting into the fountain pen inks. So we come down here, and this is kind of my European mishmash shelf. I've got German here with Diatramentus. These are all Gierbon, which is the oldest ink company in France. Got some Australia, which really should probably be on the Asian shelf, but it's not. Uh, Robert Oster um, and some Sydney Harbor Blue from Blackstone. Um, then I've got some more German ink, but let me just show you. Now, if you remember, I mentioned the Bungo Box Soleil. It is very similar to this Diatramentus Mahatma Gandhi, which is a saffron yellow. But the interesting thing is they have the op exact opposite properties. This ink starts out yellow and dries to a kind of orangey yellow. The other ink starts out orange and dries to a paler yellow. So it's like they're the exact opposite inks. Um, Giermann, um, I have I, the only bottle, the only just like plain bottle of ink I have right now from them is Rouge Granat, but I've also, which is Garnet Red, which is the shade of red that I like in the gemstone range. Um, I have had like Violette Pensée, which is Pansy Purple, Lier Sauvage, which is uh, Wild Ivy, uh, which is a really pretty true green. I've had a lot of Giorban bottles over the years, and the only knock people have about Giorban is that these bottles are not really conducive to getting a good fill when you get down to a certain level, just because of the shape of them. Um, so, yeah, that's the only just, like, plain bottle. All of these are Giorban, but they're shimmer inks. And this one is, um, Emerald de Chavour, which is a beautiful emerald green with, uh, gold specks in it. This is Corneline de Jept, which is kind of a brownish orange with gold. This one is Carub de Chypre, which is a brown with gold which actually is really a very pretty ink. This one is the black with, or the, no, this is the blue, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's the blue with silver. And this one is my favorite. This one is Amethyst Doral, which is a lovely purple with silver sheen to it. Um, my Robert Oster inks, I have a few of them. I have uh, Blue Water Ice, which is kind of a, electric blue. I've got spearmint, a velvet crush, and then I have hippo purple, which was um, part of the Hippo Noto notebook Kickstarter. 
Um, now this is a very unique ink. This one is from the Netherlands. It's called Ackerman, and the color is Chinatown Red. And it used to be you could only purchase this in The Hague, in the Netherlands. So I always wanted a bottle of it, but I was like, hell no. I'm not paying shipping from the Netherlands just for a bottle of ink. Um, and eventually Van Ness Pins out in Little Rock, Arkansas started being the U.S. distributor of these and uh, Anderson Pins as well in Wisconsin. So uh, once they came stateside, I was like, well, I'm going to try a bottle. And the thing it's most renowned for is the bottle itself. Um, you can see here it's a very unique shape. And basically what you do is you just turn it upside down and then that puts the ink in the top so you can get a full fill from your pen. And there's a little marble in there that separates it out so that you can then, if you're lucky and get it going the right direction, you can turn it and have the ink go back in the bottle. Um, these are the smaller bottles. They used to come in bigger bottles, but you know what? I don't need a much bigger bottle than this. Um, I do have a couple of colors on my list from Ackerman that I'd like to add to my collection that could be part of my 100 bottles of ink on the shelf. This is a German Pelican Edelstein. Edelstein is the German word for gemstone. The Onyx. And this is my favorite black ink. It's just so super pigmented. And I know you're probably thinking, well, isn't black just black? It's the absence of color. What the heck? But... Believe it or not, there are actually some variations in black ink. So uh, this is a Giorban uh, bottle of uh, Moon Dust. Yeah, it's not quite what you would think that name would be, but yes, it's Moon Dust. It's a really kind of dusky purple, pretty ink. Now this is kind of my unicorn blood bottle, and I call it unicorn blood because I paid through the nose for it. This is the Lamy Dark Lilac, and it was with it was um, the ink that was created for the limited edition Lamy Dark Lilac Safari pen that came out a couple years ago, and the ink sold out like I don't know within a day or two of the release. It went like hotcakes, and I was able to get some cartridges, but I didn't buy a bottle right away. And then when I decided I wanted a bottle, it was too late by about two or three days. So this bottle showed up on the Anderson Pins website for 50 bucks. I am so ashamed to admit I paid a dollar a milliliter for a bottle of ink, but this is like unicorn's blood, so I'm really rationing this out because once it's gone, it's gone. So I'm not using that as often, but it is a beautiful ink. But see, that's the that's the rabbit hole you fall down when you start in this particular hobby and collection hobby. So this is my American ink stash and admittedly it is smaller than the others. Um, now, um, these bottles, these plastic bottles and these big square bottles are a brand, uh, the man is based in um, Nathan Tardif, the maker of this ink. He's based in Boston and he is a very vocal conservative which if the properties of the ink don't create controversy within the fountain pen community, the fact that he is not in the least bit shy about sharing his political opinions is. Um, personally, I don't care because I'm a conservative too, but there are people who refuse to buy his ink simply because he talks about his political leanings, which is ridiculous, but whatever. Um, this one I have now, remember when I showed you the Orochizuku and I said it wasn't in your face, this is one that is in your face, and the label came off of it. This is Noodler's Cayenne, and it is a pretty strong reddish orange. Uh, this is Green, green Cactus. Um, this one is pretty. This one is Ottoman's Rose, which is kind of a magenta. And yes, I know I've said I don't like pink how many times, but uh, this one is Polar Green, which I bought after buying a sample of it. This one is Apache Sunset. This one is probably more similar to you, Yaki, because it's not quite as in your face, but it can be depending on the size of the nib you use. Now this one is my favorite. This is the original formulation of Bay State Concord Grape. 
and you'll see around here their little spill. It's a really super pigmented, saturate, saturated bluish purple. Now, I have to be careful what pens I use that in because some of my finer nibs it will clog, um, but I really only use that in my Twisbees with the broad nibs and it works fine. This is the original formulation. He changed it a couple years ago and I haven't had a new bottle to see how the color compares. But I have heard that the new formulation is pretty similar to the old one, so I don't feel like I would dislike the new one. Um, I just still have this. Now, the one thing some people don't like about these inks is that they smell like paint, but it's the pigment. It's the pigment, and they're such beautiful, vibrant colors. Um, you know, I actually don't mind the smell, but some people do. This is a Wall Everberry bottle from the Wall Ever Sharp Company. But my favorite one of these is the Wallberry, which is a much more blurpily, purpley blue. This was the one that got me started on my obsession with purple blue inks. And let's see, what else do I have here? I have. I only keep this Parker Quink because I found it at Staples a few years back. And I was like, wait a minute, what? They're selling bottled ink? Are you kidding me? They're not anymore, but that was like a rare. That wasn't quite unicorn blood because it's just black ink, but, you know. Um, this one is, uh, this one should actually be on the Giorban shelf. This is a dip pen only ink. Because dip pen ink has to be a little more viscous so that it sticks to the dip nib because, you know, you're constantly dipping it. And so it's a little thicker ink and you definitely don't use that in fountain pens. Um, these are an interesting brand, uh, Private Reserve. I really love this color. It's a purpley bluish. It's like the gemstone. This one, I'm not too, so this might be my third bottle of regret, <laughs> which sounds so ominous, doesn't it? This one is kind of a washed out kind of blue. It's supposed to be a permanent ink. I don't know if I like that one as much as I thought I would. Um, ebony blue is nice kind of a bluey black. And this was the first bottle of Private Reserve I bought that I absolutely adore, Avocado. And you can see that even though I've used it a lot, I mean, these ink bottles are massive, so they last a while. So there you have it. That is my ink collection. I've got some random stationary stuff stored there. Um, and this beer stein actually has a story to it. It's an authentic German beer stein, and basically Marty Jacobson, who is one of the football team's biggest uh, donors and supporters, um, I guess when he went to Germany, he brought it back to Coach Whipple, and for some reason Coach Whipple gave it to Paul Gorham, who was our ops director, the man who passed away last year. And before he passed away, Paul gave it to Matt Schell because there was a point where Matt Schell who at one point was a GA, and he was a defensive GA working as an assistant coach, he blew his Achilles tendon in a pickup basketball game, and there was a large sp span of time where he couldn't be on the field because he was on crutches. So they gave him uh, the chance to work with Paul. So Paul gave Matt this beer stein, and then Matt recently left because he got a coaching gig um, after the new staff came in, so he gave it to Bill. So it has quite a lineage and quite a history, and it's kind of it's kind of one of those things that it just means something to us, nobody else. But anyway, so I just put that there because I figured it would be safer on the shelf um, than it would be anywhere else. So there you have it. There's a little tour of my ink shelf. Um, Ooh, pardon me, I'm holding my cell phone, and that was not good. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions about any of the inks, or you want to know anything any further about my collection of ink, uh, please leave a comment below, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. And I will see you soon. Bye!